Welcome to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, folks, a Bitcoin and a crypto market continue to pull back. Bitcoin currently sitting at $65,571. And this is the pullback, the local top we've been talking about for a long time. A lot of people have been trolling me. Oh, Bitcoin's going to keep going. This time's different. But market cycles have to play out. Market principles have to play out, right? Um, there can be periods of incredible surges and movements of price. But in order for that to be sustainable, as to keep going higher, we have to cool down. We have to build support levels. So we see uh, some pretty big red candles here on the daily chart but that's beautiful that's healthy you may say tony how are red candles beautiful because it is allowing us to set the support levels to keep going higher we want to go to six figures not just seventy four thousand dollars and if you look back in the history of bitcoin's bull market moves we've had significant pullbacks on the way up uh, this is normal in a bull market the important thing to note is we are in the uptrend. We are in a bull market and we have to build support levels along the way. Um, a key metric we've been looking at is the DXY, the dollar currency index, continues to look strong. You see it's printing green candles on the daily chart. So risk assets like Bitcoin and all coins are going to continue to move downwards. So everything is bleeding right now. Meme coins, all the all coins for the most part, except for maybe Solana. Solana continues to move pretty strong. It's up 1.22% over the past 24 hours. So Solana, uh, you know, it's funny. In the early parts of the bull market, starting in 2023, we saw Solana was moving. A lot of liquidity is entering via Solana and then circling its way up to Bitcoin and then from Bitcoin back down to the altcoins. And we, we've we been seeing meme coins have been going crazy lately, but uh, they're still holding some of the strong positions here in the market cap. Like Dogecoin is still number nine. Uh, Shiba Inu is still at number 11 here. So uh, still a lot of liquidity in these meme coins. So let's take a look at some data around Bitcoin. Um, one of the other indications that we are still in a bull market is that Bitcoin supply is still leaving the exchanges. So this data here from Santiment, which is a great partner of the podcast, um, showing Bitcoin leaving um, the exchanges, even though the price is correcting, which is generally something you see in the bull market. In the bear market, uh, you know, a lot of uh, coins are going back on the exchanges to be sold. So, uh, you know, it's not the end all be all of all metrics, but you want to look at the market holistically, look at a variety of different metrics to get an idea of what's happening. Now, in addition, meme coins here are starting to lose some social volume. So here, uh, I know those of you listening in the audio can't see this, but here you see on sentiment that the social volume is declining around meme coins. So as the prices cool down and as the liquidity starts to flow out, there's going to be less and less talk about meme coins on social media, but don't get me wrong. It's still high compared to how it was uh, even in early February. So uh, once again, folks, we got to be patient here and see how things progress. Now, let's take a look at the top trending coins on social media. Book of Meme, boom, continues to get the lion's share of the mentions here. Uh, a lot of positive sentiment around it. Solana comes in at number two, and that makes sense because its price has been going up. Jupiter at number three. Blocknet comes in at four. Uh, Phantom comes in at five. Gito comes in at number six. That's uh, the JTO token. Uh, Pyth Network comes in at seven. Harvest Finance. I don't think I've heard of that, but the ticker symbol for the token is Farm. Um, that comes in at eight. BSV still trending, coming in here at uh, number nine. And then Duco. This is a meme coin. <laughs> these meme coins, man. People come up with the weirdest meme coins these days. But look, I I've said many times, if you're making money off of meme coins, good luck to you. God bless. But it's not something that I'm messing around with. I have a little bit of Dogecoin, but it's more of a collectible versus an investment. Um, but I'm not messing with meme coins. They are the riskiest aspect of the crypto market. But, uh, you know, you hold them and you make money, then more power to you. Now, we got some updates here around crypto hiring. 
BlockFi's Zach Prince heads for the crypto exit. So many of you know BlockFi's uh, former CEO, Zach Prince. Uh, I think this makes sense. He's getting out of the industry because, look, BlockFi, what a mess, right? One of the collapses that took place in the crypto bear market. So it had been a year and a half since Zach Prince's last X post, a retweet announcing that the lending platform BlockFi would pause operations amid the fallout from FTX's collapse. Then this past Monday, Prince returned to say he'd be leaving crypto altogether. Prince is taking over as the CEO of RE Cost Seg, a firm that offers potentially tax-saving cost segregation studies to real estate investors. It's the first time Prince has worked in, in a real estate-focused firm uh, as he has worked in lending in the years before he founded BlockFi, according to his LinkedIn. Look, I don't blame him. You know, walk away from crypto because your reputation is tarnished. You know, don't even try to come back or go work somewhere else. It's, it was just so messy, and uh, I don't blame him for leaving. In general, executives skewered by FTX's fall haven't flooded for the exits. Brett Harrison, the one-time president of FTX.us, launched a new derivatives brokerage named Architect, and BlockWorks previously reported on Backpack, a former FTX employee-led startup that's created a popular wallet for Solana users. Prince, whose firm entered bankruptcy due to FTX exposure, testified at Sam Bankman-Fried's trial in November. Prosecutors questioned Prince on his decision to lend funds to Alameda Research, FTX's sister company. Now, Anchorage Digital makes SEC vet its general counsel. The crypto platform Anchorage Digital named Tuang Vai Li its general counsel. I'll, I will actually be interviewing some from Anchorage very soon. Uh, Li uh, most recently worked in regulatory and legal roles at Bain Capital Crypto and WorldCoin. She was also a partner at Bain Capital Crypto. Uh, before that, Lee spent years at the Securities and Exchange Commission, where she handled some of the agency's earliest crypto investigations, according to an Anchorage Digital blog post. Some other notable hiring news include the head of digital assets at Steve Cohen's 0.72 left the hedge fund, Bloomberg reported. Uh, former GSR researcher Matt Kunke left the firm to become BlackRock's digital asset ETF's product strategist. NFT fantasy sports startup SoRare laid off 22 employees from its New York office in February, TechCrunch reported. So we got a mix here, folks. Some folks uh, leaving due to bad reputation, some layoffs, but uh, we continue to see more TradFi folks entering the crypto industry, uh, government <laughs> officials entering the crypto industry, and some movement of talent within the industry. So uh, it is what it is. The, these are things that, that happen in every industry. Now, Nigerian SEC seeks to raise crypto exchange registration fee. Nigeria has been in the news a lot lately. We know they detain two Binance executives and they want $10 billion from Binance. It's crazy. <laughs> um, it's like they're holding these executives as hostages. So under the updated guidelines, uh, digital asset exchanges and custodians must pay an application fee of 300,000 Naira, if I'm saying that right, or $186 up from the previous 100,000 Naira, which was about $62. So I think Nigeria is in some financial issues here, and they're trying to collect fees and money wherever they can. Like I said, $10 billion they want from Binance. It's incredible. In the announcement, the SEC said the proposed changes were made to provide clarity and incorporate suggestions from the industry stakeholders, particularly with regard to the recent engagements uh, with the Central Bank of Nigeria. The Nigerian SEC first issued rules and guidelines for all crypto and digital asset service providers in May 2022, but on Friday, March 15, 2024, it suggested an amendment to the rules. So folks, we're seeing, though, this is just an indication of what's happening uh, across the globe that different countries are not banning crypto, they're not shutting down exchanges. They want their pound of flesh, though, right? They want their tax revenue, they want their fees. And of course, Nigeria wants $10 billion in penalties from Binance. But we're seeing the on-ramps being set up here, and uh, the governments are allowing it and regulating it and taxing it. And that makes me bullish because years ago, they were trying to ban this and kick it out and do all, they were spreading tons of FUD, right? We're going to ban this thing. It shouldn't exist. And now 
they're letting these crypto exchanges uh, run their business. And, and, and they know, you know, I think all of that back in the day was just FUD to weed out um, a lot of the retail that front ran the institutions. So now the institutions are here, they're ready to pump this and they're, they're going to allow it. I mean, just look in the US, right? The Bitcoin ETFs going live, Wall Street's here. So it's it's happening globally. And uh, it makes me very excited for the future bull markets, not even just this bull market, but future. I'm, I'm talking 2029 and like 2030 and so forth, right? There's future bull markets still coming. Obviously, I want to make money in each bull market. So uh, I'm going to be buying the dips and riding up the bull market waves and selling the euphoric top, folks. So that's why I've been saying this correction here for Bitcoin, healthy, beautiful, this is what I've been waiting for because pumps like these are not sustainable. Um, they need to have pullbacks and, and wipe out all the leverage and, and all these things that are in the market and then reset and keep going higher. And of course, as always, as Bitcoin goes higher, it's the rising tide that lifts all boats. It will bring all coins, even meme coins with it. Uh, the liquidity will flow down to Bitcoin and some of these other altcoins that are laggards like XRP and Cardano and so forth that haven't been moving will move significantly. But we got to be patient. Patience is the key, folks. Um, obviously, you want to be educated and looking at the charts and staying up to date. Uh, but you got to exercise patience and, and don't forget to check your emotions at the door. It's about data. It's about the metrics, the analytics, and what's happening. Well, folks, that's the news. Let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button. Be sure to check out our sponsor. Uh, that is Uphold, which is a great exchange that you can buy to dip, buy Bitcoin and all coins and so forth. They also have precious metals such as gold, silver, palladium, platinum that you can trade. Uh, they have a great app and they're easy to use. They have proof of reserves, so you can go review uh, their audits and much more. Uh, this is a platform I've been using since 2018. Thank you guys for watching and listening, and I'll talk to you all later.